So that's the end of the introduction. Um, let's now begin to drill down on the data resources that we'll need to launch our investigation. And there are two different kinds of data we need to talk about, the corpus and the KB. Just like any other NLP problem, we need to start with a corpus, a large collection of natural language text. And for relation extraction, we need sentences containing two or more entities. And because our goal is to do relation extraction with distant supervision, we need to be able to connect the entities to a KB. So we need a corpus in which the entity mentions are annotated with entity resolutions, which map them to unique unambiguous identifiers, the same identifiers that are used in the KB. Um, so in this representation, I've got the string Elon Musk, which is just an English language string. That's what we call an entity mention. And then I've got Elon underscore Musk, which is an entity ID. It's a unique, unambiguous identifier for this entity in some predefined um, uh, dictionary of entity IDs. And it's very common for this purpose to use something like Wikipedia, which has one Wikipedia page for almost any entity that you can think of. Um, for our investigation, we're going to use an adaptation of the Wikilinks corpus, which was produced by Google and UMass in 2013. The full corpus contains 40 million entity mentions from 10 million web pages. And each entity mention is annotated with a Wikipedia URL. But we're going to use just a subset of the full corpus in order to make things manageable. So let's start to look at some of the code we'll use in the Python notebooks for this topic. Um, the data assets that we'll use live in a subdirectory of our data directory called relxdata. And we've defined a class called corpus, which holds the examples and which lets you quickly look up examples containing specific entities. So if we load our corpus, we find that it contains more than 330,000 examples, pretty good sized. Uh, it's small enough that we can work with it easily on an ordinary laptop, but it's big enough to support effective machine learning. And we can print out a representative example from the corpus. Actually, this is a bit hard to read. So let me give you a different view of the same example. We represent examples using the example class, which is a named tuple with 12 fields listed here. Uh, the first two fields, entity one and entity two, contain unique identifiers for the two entities mentioned. We name identities using wiki IDs, which you can think of as the last portion of a Wikipedia URL. The next five fields represent the text surrounding the two mentions, uh, divided into five chunks. So left contains the text before the first mention. Mention one is the first mention itself. Middle contains the text between the two mentions. Mention two is the second mention and right contains the text after the second mention. And the last five fields contain the same five chunks of text, but this time annotated with part of speech tags, which may turn out to be useful when we start building models for relation extraction. Now, whenever you start to work with a new data set, it's good practice to do some data exploration, to get familiar with the data. A big part of this is getting a sense of the high-level characteristics of the data, summary statistics, distributions, and so on. For example, how many entities are there, and what are the most common ones? Here's some code that computes that, and here are the results. So there are more than 95,000 unique entities, and it looks like the most common entities are dominated by geographic locations. Now, the main benefit we get from the corpus class is the ability to retrieve examples containing specific entities. So let's find examples containing Elon Musk and Tesla Motors. There are five such examples, and here's the first one. 
Actually, this might not be all of the examples containing Elon Musk and Tesla Motors. It's only the examples where Elon Musk was mentioned first and Tesla Motors was mentioned second. There may be additional examples that have them in the reverse order. So let's check. Look for Tesla Motors, Elon Musk. Sure enough, two more examples in reverse order. So going forward, we'll have to remember to check both directions when we're looking for examples containing a specific pair of entities. Um, okay, a few last observations on the corpus. Uh, first, this corpus is not without flaws. As you get more familiar with it, you'll probably discover that it contains many examples that are nearly, but not exactly, duplicates. This seems to be an artifact of the web document sampling methodology that was used in the construction of the Wikilinks data set. Um, and it winds up creating a few distortions, and we may see some examples of this later. Um, but even though the corpus has a few warts, it will serve our purposes uh, just fine. One thing that this corpus does not include is any annotation about relations. So it could not be used for the fully supervised approach to relation extraction because that requires a relation label on each pair of entity mentions. And we don't have any such annotation here. The only annotations that we have in this corpus are entity resolutions, mapping an entity mention to an entity ID. That means that in order to make headway, we'll need to connect the corpus with an external source of knowledge about relations. We need a KB. Happily, our data distribution does include a KB, which is derived from Freebase. Uh, Freebase has an interesting history. It was created in the late 2000s by a company called MetaWeb, led by John Gianandrea, who later became my boss. Um, Google acquired MetaWeb in 2010, and Freebase became the foundation of Google's knowledge graph. Unfortunately, Google shut Freebase down in 2016, which was tragic, but the Freebase data is still available from various sources. So our KB is a collection of relational triples, each consisting of a relation, a subject, and an object. So for example, place of birth, Barack Obama, Honolulu. Has spouse, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama. Author, the audacity of hope, Barack Obama. So as you might guess, the relation is one of a handful of predefined constants like place of birth or has spouse. Uh, the subject and the object are entities represented by wiki IDs. It's the same ID space used in a corpus. Wiki IDs are basically the last part of a Wikipedia URL. Now, just like we did for the corpus, we've created a KB class to store the KB triples and some associated indexes. This class makes it easy and efficient to look up KB triples both by relation and by entities. So here we're just loading the data and printing a count of the KB triples. Uh, there are 45,000 KB triples. So this is quite a bit smaller than the corpus. If you remember the corpus um, had 330, has 330 examples. Um, and we can print out the first KB triple. So this is a KB triple that says that the contains relation holds between Brickfields and Kuala Lumpur Central, Central Railway Station, which I did not know. Just like we do with the corpus, let's do some data exploration to get a sense of the high level characteristics of the KB. So first, how many relations are there? The all relations attribute of the KB contains a list of its relations. And it seems that there are 16 of them. Well, what are the relations and how big are they? This code prints, prints out a list with sizes. Um, note the get triples for relation method, which returns a list of the KB triples for a given relation. You begin to get a sense of what kind of stuff is in this KB. Um, it looks like the contains relation is really big with more than 18,000 triples. 
And there are a few relations that are pretty small with fewer than a thousand triples. Here's some code that prints one example from each relation, relation so that we can form a better sense of what they mean. Some of these are familiar facts, like adjoins France, Spain. Others might refer to unfamiliar entities. So, for example, I've never heard of Sheridan Le Fanu. But I think you can quickly form an intuitive sense of what each relation is about. Now, one of the most important methods in the KB class is get triples for entities, which lets us look up triples by the entities they contain. So let's use it to see what triples contain France and Germany. Okay, sure, they belong to the adjoins relation. That makes sense. Now, relations like adjoins are intuitively symmetric, so we'd expect to find the inverse triple in the KB as well. And yep, it's there. But note that there's no guarantee that such inverse triples actually appear in the KB. There's no guarantee that the KB is complete. And you could easily write some code to find missing inverses. Now, that relation adjoins is symmetric, but most relations are intuitively asymmetric. So let's see what triples we have for Tesla Motors and Elon Musk. Okay, they belong to the founders relation. Good, that's expected. That's an asymmetric relation. Uh, what about the inverse, Elon Musk and Tesla Motors? Okay, they belong to the worked at relation. Seems like a funny way to describe Elon's role at Tesla, but okay. Uh, so this shows that you can have one relation between X and Y and a different relation that holds between Y and X. One more observation. Um, there may be more than one relation that holds between a given pair of entities, even in one direction. So, uh, for example, let's see what triples hold, uh, what triples contain Cleopatra and Tomali the 13th Theos Philopater. Oh my goodness. This pair belongs to both the has sibling relation and the has spouse relation. To which I can only say, <gasps> moving right along, let's look at the distribution of entities in the KB. How many entities are there and what are the most common ones? Well, here's some code that computes that. Uh, there are 40,000 entities in the KB. So that's fewer than half as many entities as in the corpus. If you remember, the corpus has 95,000 unique entities. So there are lots of entities in the corpus that don't appear in the KB at all. But just like the corpus, the most common entities are dominated by geographic locations, England, India, Italy, and so on. Note that there's no promise or expectation that this KB is complete. For one thing, the KB doesn't even contain many of the entities from the corpus. And even for the entities it does include, there may be possible triples which are true in the world, but are missing from the KB. So as an example, these triples are in the KB. Founders, Tesla Motors, Elon Musk. Worked at Elon Musk, Tesla Motors. Founders, SpaceX, Elon Musk. You might expect to find worked at Elon Musk, SpaceX, but nope, that triple is not in the KB. That's weird. Well, in fact, the whole point of relation extraction is to identify new relational triples from natural language text so that we can add them to a KB. If our KBs were complete, we wouldn't have anything to do. Now, actually, in this case, you might object that we don't need to do relation extraction to make that completion. We could write some logic that recognizes that um, founders XY entails worked at YX and apply that rule systematically across the KB and use that to fill in the missing triple in this case. 
But the general point still stands that there may be lots of triples that are true in the world, but missing from the KB, where that strategy is not going to allow us to, to add the missing information.